Every founder hits this point. Your inbox becomes your help desk and Slack turns into your task manager. Every day feels like catch up, marking messages as unread just to remember who's still waiting on you. We've tested hundreds of tools, building our own startup and investing in 30 others. And we've seen this pattern happen over and over again. The problem isn't your team, it's the noise. The right setup turns customer feedback into product decisions and keeps everybody aligned. So let's break down the tools that make it possible. The first thing you're gonna sign up for is either Microsoft or Google Workspace, and this is not even a debate. Microsoft is clunky, it's old school, and it's more for enterprises than for startups. I'm judging you if you're thinking of using Microsoft. I'm genuinely judging you right now. You wanna use Google Workspace, it's faster to set up, easier to use, and it's going to work with all the modern tools that we're gonna talk about in this video. But you already knew that one, you did. Second, you need a proper tool for real-time conversations so you can talk to your team, your customers, and your investors. And no, not WhatsApp or text messages. Those might feel fast, but they get messy very quickly. Some founders think about using Discord, especially in the B2C or open source space because their communities are already there. But in B2B, it feels misaligned. It has a chaotic UI, it has weak permissions, and it has no integrations. It makes your startup look more like a hobby project. A newer tool that people are talking about is called Glue. It's an AI native communication tool, but it's likely headed down the same path as Threads and Campsite. Both tools looked promising once upon a time, but what happened is they both got Aqua hired and the products were shut down. So this left users scrambling to not only find a new tool, but they lost all of their historical data. Now, Glue is also missing a critical feature for startups that it will never be able to have. So what should you use? Well, Slack is the default communication layer for startups, and it's for a good reason. And Slack's not just for internal communication, it has Slack Connect, which is essential, and it's the feature that all the other tools will never be able to have. It lets you create shared channels with contractors and vendors, and most importantly, your customers. Y Combinator pushes startups to talk to their customers constantly. And Slack Connect makes that easy because you can have a shared channel for onboarding, for support, and for real-time product feedback. Yeah, it's chaotic at times, and honestly, I wish that there was a better alternative, but Slack owns the market. Your customers are in there, so the decision is already made for you. And as you scale, you're going to need to expand communication beyond Slack, but we're gonna get there in a bit. Speaking of customers, you don't want to just talk to them on Slack. You also wanna talk to them face-to-face to to get feedback on the product and also the Figma mockups of the features that you're building. And you're going to want to remember what was said on the call without scribbling notes or re-watching an hour-long call. You're probably used to seeing those meeting bots join your meetings now. And this is interesting because the meeting recording space has really become commoditized. Most of these tools are using an infrastructure tool like recall.ai, which means that virtually any product can now add record meetings as a feature with minimal engineering effort. That means if a tool that you're already using and paying for has a meeting recording feature, it's probably good enough, even if it's a secondary feature. But if you're not using a tool that already has a meeting recording feature, then you wanna check out Granola. It doesn't join your calls. It actually just works quietly in the background. And if you wanna scribble something down, you can, but it also transcribes your call. And then it combines both your scribble notes and the transcript and enhances them with AI. It won't record your audio or video, but it will take detailed notes. And then the coolest part is that you can actually ask it questions across all of your meetings and it will search all of your notes and then give you an answer with AI. For example, you can ask what's the most requested product feature and it will pull the answer and aggregate it from every product feedback call or conversation that you've had. Speaking of meetings, sometimes they're not totally necessary and a quick asynchronous video to your team or your customers is more than enough. And for this, you're probably thinking we're going to recommend Loom, but we're not. We used to love Loom, but ever since Atlassian acquired them, it's become bloated with AI features and paid AI upgrades that nobody asked for. The app crashes a lot, videos just stop recording, and everything has gotten so slow. It's become really dreadful to use. Tell us another one that comes up a lot. We actually used it to film our motion training. 
It is great for polished course style videos, but for async updates, it's a bit clunky. For example, if you're viewing a televideo and you want to leave a comment, you have to like manually put in the timestamp yourself, which totally kills you even wanting to leave a comment. And Tell is not focused on fixing these sort of things. Not to mention, this is what happened when one of our contractors sent us a televideo while his Usher playlist was muted in another tab. Enter Supercut. We're obsessed. It's fast, it's beautifully designed, and it just feels good to use. Little touches like your company logo appearing before a video plays just makes everything feel 10 times more polished. The AI features are smart and subtle, like actually useful AI chapter markers, and you can even chat with the video to get answers and summaries. It saves us time, and now we actually look forward to recording async updates again. Speaking of actually looking forward to using a tool, would you believe that we actually enjoy email because of this next one? The thing is, most founders use Gmail, but it's slow, it's messy, and you can't easily see what's important as all of your emails are delivered in one jumbled mess. Superhuman helps founders stay focused on the right emails, not just what lands at the top of their inbox. With split inboxes like VIPs, team, customers, investors, and newsletters, everything's organized the moment that it lands in your inbox. So if you only have five minutes, you can jump into your team split, clear a few replies, and unblock your team. And when it's time to follow up, Superhuman is already on top of it for you because it flags emails that need a reply or a follow-up and it drafts a response in your tone using AI. So this is perfect if you're trying to nudge an investor or close a deal. And if every bug report or question is going straight to your inbox or your Slack, then you're going to miss out or burn out trying to keep up. When this starts happening, it's a good time to start looking at implementing a proper help desk. You probably would have seen other SaaS companies using tools like Intercom or Zendesk, but these are not the tools that you want to start off with. Companies like Superhuman and Zapier are using them now, but that's because they grew so big that they had so many API requests that they needed a behemoth like Zendesk at that point. And you don't want to use Intercom early on because otherwise you're going to be constantly pulled into live chats. And when you're small, you're setting the wrong expectation and you're going to cause yourself a total headache. If your main focus is simply ticketing and providing good customer support, then we recommend Help Scout. They are known for being the most customer centric help desk. So if great customer service is one of your company values, then you want to use them. It's what we've used for the past five years and teams like Zapier and Superhuman actually initially built their businesses on Help Scout, and their support teams loved it. It's ideal if you want one help desk to manage multiple high-value inboxes such as sales at or support at. That said, if you're actually living in Slack Connect channels with your customers and you're dying for a more structured way to manage product feedback and bugs, always marking threads as unread and driving yourself nuts, then there's a better option and that's plain. That said, you're only going to want to use them for a single channel like support at, as they aren't meant to be a full shared inbox for your team. And because they charge per seat, you're going to want to be mindful about who on your team should be getting added in. You know how important it is for your team to coordinate on getting work done, aka having a clear way to manage tasks and deadlines and who's responsible for what, without needing to constantly chase people down. Most founders either wing it in Slack or they go way too deep with tools like Jira, Asana, Monday, ClickUp. I'm sure you've heard of them all. And yes, they keep you organized, but they don't actually help your team coordinate on getting work done. They're heavy, bloated, and they're built mainly for enterprises. When it comes to managing projects, there are two tools that we recommend for startups. If you're a very engineering heavy team, then Linear is one of the best tools available. It's fast and its workflows are designed for developers. But the moment your team expands beyond engineering and say into marketing, Linear starts to fall short. And what typically happens at that point is the marketing team may implement another tool like Asana or Monday and departments become fragmented. What we use and what we recommend instead is Motion. And that's because it's built for teams beyond engineering and it has things like AI baked in at the core, so tasks can auto-schedule on your team's calendar so everyone knows what to work on next, and so product and marketing and engineering can all collaborate together. 
Motion is really doubling down on being an AI-first project management tool. So they also have AI docs, which we use to document our internal processes, and then an AI meeting recorder that takes meeting notes and creates tasks for us automatically. Now that you have all the tools to run your business remotely, don't forget that you still need a business address. This is where your company will be legally registered and where things like legal documents and important mail from the government will be sent. But luckily, having a startup no longer means that you need to spend money on an office space. Don't make the mistake of using your personal address. You will move and then you're going to have the hassle of having to not only update your personal address, but your business address across your company, credit cards, bank, and government. It is a mess. And you don't need a co-working membership at a WeWork or anything either. Yes, they offer the solution, but it's overkill if you don't actually need a desk. But there's an easier, cheaper, and more tech-forward solution that will give you exactly what you need without locking you into a lease. And that solution is stable. It is a virtual mailbox. So let me explain how it works. Your mail comes in and they scan it and send it to you via email. And Stable also has an integration with Slack, so you can actually take action on your mail right from Slack. It is so easy to set up and to use. If you wanna check out Stable, go to the link in the description for a discount. Now that your tools are finally working for you, there's just one bottleneck left. It's the same mistake that Alex made and it nearly cost us the chance to work together. Watch this video next to learn what it is and how to avoid it.